Hello, ladies and gents. Happy today. Hope you're doing well. So uh, what I'd like to do now is look at uh, this plural membrane mystery document. Uh, this is a document you got earlier week. You see some lungs on that. Uh, this is a video to sort of walk through what's going on in that document. So um, in chapter four, we look at epithelial tissues and the integumentary system. The prefix epi means upon. So epithelial tissues are coverings, okay? Uh, so epithelial membranes are going to cover surface of the body. And one particular type of epithelial tissue is what's called a serous membrane. Now, uh, the way to interpret or to sort of conceptualize a serous membrane is to imagine sort of a, a mostly deflated balloon. And if you push your hand into that balloon, uh, if you take your hand and push it into that balloon, you'll see that there are two layers of tissue there. There are two membranes. Uh, so, uh, a serous membrane is one particular type of epithelial membrane, and it covers the outside of internal organs, okay? So, uh, again, serous membranes, generally speaking, cover the outside of internal organs, and just like we saw in this previous image, it has two layers, okay? Uh, those two layers are called the visceral and parietal layer. Viscera means gut, so the visceral layer is sort of tightly bound to the organ, and for parietal, I think like perimeter, uh, it's sort of around the outside of the organ. So you have those two layers. And an example are the pleural membranes, so the visceral and parietal pleura. Uh, the visceral and parietal pleura are two membranes that surround the outside of the lungs. So if you go to this document, um, the first statement there, it asks what visceral and parietal pleura are. Again, they're the two membranes that cover the outside of the lungs. One membrane is tightly bound to the surface of the lungs. The other is lining the inside of your thoracic cage. So if you can, uh, looking at this image here, if you can imagine your rib cage, along the inside, you have the parietal pleura. And then covering the surface of the lungs, you have the visceral pleura. And between them is the serous fluid. Uh, serous fluid, or in this case, pleural fluid, uh, it reduces the friction between those two membranes when your lungs expand. So when your lungs expand, uh, your rib cage pulls up, and when your rib cage pulls up and out, uh, your lungs glide along the inside of that. So that fluid uh, is a fluid that reduces friction between the membranes. Uh, let's see. Uh, this demo, uh, for the, the latter questions, uh, typically we do this in class with a couple pieces of glass. Uh, but the idea is when you take the two objects and move them against one another, when they are dry, there's some friction. Okay, uh, but if you uh, wet them, then that's going to reduce the friction between those surfaces. So I just got a couple of uh, paper plates. And again, there's going to be friction. You can hear the sound, right? So there's friction between those membranes when they rub together. Adding that fluid helps reduce the friction. Uh, so when it says describe the ease with which two objects move when they are moved up or down relative to one another when they're wet, again, there would be less friction uh, if this was moistened. Uh, the last question on this page is describe the ease with which the two objects are pulled apart when they are wet. All right, so I got a, a dampened uh, paper towel here. And what I'll do is I'll rub that on one side of the membrane. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying not to make a mess in the Chromebook. And dampen the other side. And then um, when you rub them together, uh, you can see how the fluid helps uh, the membranes adhere to one another. Okay. So that fluid can reduce the friction between the membranes and it can help them cohere or attach to or uh, adhere to one another, okay? Uh, so it says describe the ease with which two objects are pulled apart when they're wet. Uh, again, they tend to stay stuck together uh, if they're wet, wetted. All right, on the back page, looking at the back page, it says why, it is, import, why is it important for the pleura to secrete this pleural fluid? Um, that pleural fluid uh, again, it lubricates the two layers of the lungs, and it helps them stay together, okay? So it helps the uh, lungs expand and contract with less friction, and it keeps the, the lungs sort of adhered to the interior wall of the chest. Uh, why do the two plural layers stick together to one another uh, when one tries to pull them apart? Uh, again, that fluid helps create negative pressure, and it draws uh, the two uh, membranes together. Uh, the next question, why is the adhesion of the two pleural layers important to lung function? Well, your lungs don't have any muscles, okay? 
So what happens is the muscles between your ribs contract and your diaphragm contracts and that opens up your thoracic cage. Because these two membranes tend to stay together, that pulls your lungs open as well. It's sort of like an accordion. You know, an accordion doesn't open and close on its own. Your hands open and close. So your hands are like your rib cage. When your rib cage opens up, then the accordion opens up or your lungs open up. So having those two membranes stick together helps you expand your lungs when you breathe in. Uh, let's see, the next question. What symptoms would a person experience if there's a, a buildup of fluid? Uh, well, here <clears throat> you can see a buildup of fluid in the lungs can cause uh, some separation of the lungs and then the lungs can't uh, expand fully um, because the lungs, again, don't have muscle in them. <clears throat> Excuse me. If this fluid fills up a space, the lungs won't be able to open up as fully and you have issues with gas exchange. Uh, what symptoms would a person experience if there is a deficiency in this fluid? So if you have less fluid uh, between the lungs, you can have uh, increased friction. Uh, that can cause things like pleurisy or inflammation in these membranes, and that causes pain while breathing. Uh, finally, what would happen to lung function uh, if the two parietal layers are separated? Well, if you separate those two layers, the lung will actually collapse because, again, lungs don't have muscles to hold them open. So you rely on the negative pressure between uh, the two membranes to help keep the lung open. Okay. So, again, uh, if you separate the layers, it can actually collapse the lung. All right. So that walks you through uh, this document. Again, this is just an intro into membranes, coverings, uh, which is one of the topics from Chapter 4. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.